Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and we are fresh back from our trip to Yellowstone National Park. We're back in the studio, and boy, what a trip we had. It was amazing, and we're going to talk about it today. We're going to share some of our experiences. I've got my brother from another mother, Manny Carrascal, here with us today. And Hello, say, hi, say hi, Manny. Hello, how is everyone? Good. Welcome to be here. Good. Stop talking. Now... No, I'm just kidding, but um, we we had we had such a good time. We had uh, Manny and Lindsay out there. Then we had uh, uh, Peter Hahn and uh, Amber. I can't can't remember Amber's last name. I don't know how to say it. It's, it's very a difficult one. I think it's, it's a difficult Amber last Wong. name. Yeah. Sure. And then we also had Dustin and Nick. And uh, man, we just had a great time. We were out there for five days chasing bears coming out of hibernation. Bears with cubs. We were watching bison having babies. We were seeing coyotes and wolves and bighorn sheep and all kinds of crazy stuff. So um, we came back with enough material for the next year. And uh, and and uh, we've been painting since then, and it's been great. But uh, before we get into all that, I want to remind you guys that we've got a big sale going on. We've had it going on uh, for quite some time uh, in, relief, in, re in response to all the COVID issues going on worldwide. You know, we were going to stop our sale uh, a while back, but then we decided to go ahead and prolong it. And so, but we have to, we have to come to an end at some point. So I want to let you guys know that this is the last week uh, that you can get all of our stuff on sale at crazy prices. The My animation course, I think this is the last weekend for that. Is that correct? Yeah, this is the, this is the last weekend for my animation course, it's the entire, uh, my introduction to animation, it's only a dollar. It's only one dollar. So if you wanna get my big introduction to animation, the entire course for one dollar, uh, this is your last weekend to be able to do that because we can't afford to keep <laughs> to keep selling it that low. How the heck do we make any money at a dollar? <laughs> Nick, jeez. But anyway, um, and then the rest of uh, everything else that's on sale, um, that's going to be going through the rest of the week, uh, and then everything's going back to the normal prices. On the upside, we've got some really cool courses coming out, and uh, we're very excited about that. Um, but let's go ahead. I guess we're going to dive in, right? Should we just so. dive in? Sure. Um, let's talk about our trip. Man, what a, what a crazy trip we had. This time, we got to stay in a little town called Gardner. Gardner is um, a very small town on the north, just right at the north entrance to Yellowstone National Park. It just sits inside uh, Montana, just north of the Wyoming-Montana border. And, um, and like I said, it's the northern gateway to Yellowstone. And from there, you've just got some incredible access to the rest of the park. And uh, we met up with Manny Carrasco and uh, Carrasco. I always say, do I, I always say Carrasco. Am I saying it wrong, Manny? Uh you can say however you want. <laughs> it's Carrasco. Yeah, Carrasco. Carrasco. It's Carrasco. I, I, it's my uh, it's my North, my New England accent. That's kind of persistent. <laughs> but um, but we just ha we had an amazing time and uh, oh, met up with some great friends. Uh, Savannah Rose, who um, is a great wildlife photographer, um, she helped us out at one point during the trip and and brought us to uh, uh, what was that what was that bear's name? What did she call that bear? Felicia. Felicia. Yes, thank you, Dustin. Felicia with two cubs. One of the most amazing uh, experiences we had up in the snow there. Uh, but we're going to, Nick, uh, 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 Manny and I just thought we'd sit and do some drawing and, and we could share our experiences and, and whatnot. Yeah. So much fun. It doesn't get old to get there. Every time we go there, it's uh, something new. Yeah. Um, you know, before uh, before Manny got there, our first night there, um, Nick and Dustin and I came across this wolf on a uh, on a bison uh, carcass. Now I don't know if I'm sure it was a winter kill, and uh, I don't think the wolf actually killed the the bison. Um, uh, I, was, I think it was a winter kill. I think from what I heard, it's uh, you know it's that old age catching up to them and dying of natural causes, but. Yeah. And so uh, we had some really good luck there watching. First of all, it's, it's you don't get to see wolves 
very often in the park. It's not a guarantee. And, uh, and so to be able to see this wolf, not only in the park, but also feeding and uh, fairly close, relatively close when you're looking, thinking about the big scheme of things. I mean, he was within 200 yards, which to me is, is a, that's a close wolf. I got a question here from er Erica. Erica Bay? Erica Bay? Erica Bay? Uh, she, she says, first of all, that trip looks amazing. A it wide was. area of Yellowstone, would you recommend for a first timer? I want to eventually take a trip out there. Uh, the whole park. There is the Lamar Valley. Well, we spent a lot of time in Lamar Valley and the Hayden Valley. Those, those areas are guaranteed to see some wildlife. From a wildlife standpoint, and I'm sure people can't hear me, but I was if it's your first trip everybody wants to do old faithful and stuff like that but if you're looking for wildlife that's not really the area the tourist area is yeah less. i mean the whole park has people in it. i don't know if you could hear nick but what nick's saying was um from a wildlife standpoint you know old faithful and the geyser basins and all that kind of stuff those are really neat but those aren't really where you see the wildlife you know it's 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 hayden valley it's uh lamar that's valley really Go ahead, Nick or uh, Manny. No, I said those uh, uh, the Old Faithful and all those areas is where you see people. Not, yeah, that's uh, where you not, see lots of tourists. And not wildlife. You know, one time, one of the times when I was out with Greg and uh, uh, a bear did get up on the on the walkway. <laughs> oh wow! Really? <laughs> Headed right over to the to the folks. But yeah, um, Hayden Valley, Lamar Valley, up you know the drive up to Madison. Uh, you want to see Buffalo um, heading toward West Yellowstone and also uh, uh, Hayden Valley is one of my favorites. I just think it's so beautiful and Lamar Valley. They're just absolutely yeah, but right it, it, there's there's like a weird magic to the Hayden Valley, isn't it? I mean, Lamar's amazing. It's it's one of my favorite places. But every time I drive through the Hayden Valley, I mean, we stopped for a little bit, Aaron, and I said, <clears throat> "Look at all this." We almost I just want to almost sit sit there. And draw, even though that, even if there's no wildlife, just because of the beauty of it. Yeah. All the snow, you know, the corridors of water and everything running through it. It's just incredible. Do you guys see any pronghorns while you were there? Yes. You see pronghorn all over the place. All over the place. I'm going to try to and let they're not, and, and they're not completely there yet. That's what's weird. There should be more um, on the drive from uh, Utah up to um, Yellowstone along Pinedale. Wyoming, uh, that's where they winter, and uh, they seem to be lagging on the way back. And another strange thing that I thought was the the, the bighorn in Jackson are still hanging around the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the reserve area. Like, they should be going up, up and high. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's always, always incredible. It's, it's so much fun. I look forward to this all the time. It's never enough time, right? Like we get there and it's time to, you know, we have so much fun. It's, it feels like we get there and then we leave. I know, right? <laughs> That's the only part I hate about it. But I know. You off. get there, it's so quick. How do I get rid of my, my selection? My selection tool. Let me see here. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. I wanted to increase the size. The head was a little small for me, so I make the head bigger. Hit return. No, that just brings up a message. <laughs> Whoops! Whoa! You want to do that? I don't. What did I just do? Be kind of user error on this thing right now. What I do? <laughs> now we're looking at everybody. Hold on, I got it right here. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Show Nick's face for a second there. <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm trying to draw, but I can't get rid of the. Uh, how do I get rid of my selection? Are you not on your pencil anymore, Aaron? I right. see. I did a selection because I, I I got them, I went to make the head bigger, but now yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of the selection that I just did. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it's it's prime. I'm I'm heading back probably um, not this weekend because I'm still tired from driving. Uh huh. <clears throat> but I'll I'll head back next weekend. Man, yeah, you go back there so often. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's. Prime time right now to go, and then, and then the um, tourists start and to get you know like I mean we experienced a little bit of that. I mean I mean I think people are. Hey Nick, give me a hand. 
Mm -hmm. Help me figure out how to get rid of the selection because I can't I figure it out. House, but we're all, everybody's out there. Uh, cut, copy. Thank you. See, I knew you could do it. <laughs> I hope I don't do what you just did because I won't know. Uh, I don't have Nick to help me. You go, <laughs> you go edit, deselect. There's got to be a shortcut for that. Probably command D. Also, Dad, can you turn up the volume from the desktop point? Like that? Yeah. For, for uh, Manny? Yeah. How's that? Manny, say something. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Is that better? Am I, am I still too, too far back? Do I just need to speak louder? No, we got you now. Okay. I think we got you. Yeah, much better. Yeah, it never feels like there's enough time when we get there. No, I know. <laughs> You know, it's, 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 you know uh, what's staying, staying that you know, getting back early and doing the live stream was a lot of fun, and and uh, that helps. That helps uh, inspiration wise, right? I mean, I, I love doing that. You know, we draw all the time, but to draw with friends is, is pretty, uh, pretty inspiring. It is, and um, th well, what I love is just sharing those experiences. You know, you're out there and you're watching a mama grizzly and. Cubs run around and yeah, to be able to oh, come yeah. back and talk about it later and yeah, it's really pretty amazing. Yeah, but then all the the time together with you know uh, eating and yeah, eating dinner, lunches, everything. It, it, it's so much fun. I I think we um, you know you have Nick and, and Dustin there, but art wise, uh, artists you know very to themselves, so we don't get to go out a lot and. Um, conventions have stopped and no light box, no San Diego Comic Con and everything. And that's usually where we see each other. So we've been pretty lucky to uh, stay connected. And right. Go ahead, Dustin. I uh, got a question here from Amber Whitman uh, asking, Aaron, what is your favorite bear experience you have ever had? Well, I've got, I've got several and um, I've, we had some great bear experiences here. But um, the, uh, my favorite, I think, probably was uh, I was at McNeil River in Alaska when I was doing uh, research for Brother Bear. And, um, uh, oops, hold on. Deselect, there we go. And um, there's, a, there's a little pad where viewers are able to go and sit and watch the wild bears. They, they only allow about um, 10 people a week into this park. It's a very high concentration of grizzly bears. And, um, and so we were there and this, they, and they tell you ahead of time, you know, the grizzlies are, we're in their world and, you know, don't worry, they're not going to come after you, but they might get very close. And, uh, but they, you know, the rangers there have worked very hard at getting the grizzlies to think of people as basically just trees, you know, we're not, we're nothing. And so we went to the viewing platform to watch these grizzlies catch salmon. And there was probably about 15 or 20 of them out there. And this one grizzly decided to come to our, our little pad where we were sitting and it was a big male. So he was probably 800, 900 pounds. He was a, you know, big, he's a big coastal bear. So he was, he was huge. And, um, and he sat right next to our pad within about 10 feet, 15 feet of me. And everything in my body was telling me to run. <laughs> everything. <laughs> and the guy, you know, I remember our ranger was sitting there going, don't run, just sit still, sit still. And it's interesting, these bears are so funny. They're so intelligent and they're also very kind of mischievous. And they, this guy knows he's not allowed, he's not allowed to touch the gravel pad. I don't know how they've trained them, but they're not allowed to touch the gravel pad. So this bear would kind of look away and he'd put his paw over and he would touch his pinky claw and, put it up, <laughs> and he would put it on the, on the gravel. And he would yawn 
And then the you know the ranger would you know say something, and he'd pull his he'd pull his pinky paw, uh, pinky claw off. Just little things like that, little just little kid kind of things to kind of test test his limits. It was really funny. interesting. It's funny. Me and my friend Tim Hodge. Tim Hodge was on that trip with me. Who has several courses for sale on our website? Yes, he does. Absolutely. Just finished one on story for television, animation. Manny, do you plan on doing more YouTube videos soon? Yes, I do. I, I've been uh, gathering uh, a lot of footage of different things, um, but right now is the moment. I, as far as like the walkabouts, as far as uh, lessons and, and technique kind of thing, you I know. Think uh, I think I just need more stuff in general. Yeah, I, I, I need to get better about that. I don't have a nick to, <laughs> to uh, get on me and make me do stuff, but uh, yes, I, I, I am. I am. I need to uh, get better about, you know, I, my thought has always been, um, you know, people say, hey, you should have more videos on how, you know, your approach to things, but I always just send them to Creature Art Teacher. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> that's my uh, cop out, but I, I understand that, you know, we, we, everybody has their own way of doing and thinking, so uh, I need to, I need to do that. So yes, the, the answer is yes. No, no, I like your current approach more. Just keep sticking with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i need to actually do my creature art teacher or whatever art aaron blaze lesson um, well we got you know. yeah we've got you slated to do one on sketchbooks right yeah sketchbooks yeah and uh nick and i talked about uh, some other a couple of other things to uh, oh, you you guys got to see uh manny's sketchbook he's got going right now with big cats <laughs> it's amazing are there any yeah. mountain lions up in Yellowstone? And if so, did you have any luck seeing them on this trip? I don't know that there are. Are there mountain lions in Yellowstone? Yes, there is. There is a, there are mountain lions in Yellowstone. Yeah, and uh, I know some researchers that are out there. Um, not yeah, uh, a mountain lion is one of the hardest things to see. I've always told people if you see one, it's like enjoy it because it's probably you know one. I'm I. It, unless you're out there with biologists and tracking them, et cetera, it's, it's super hard to, to see them. I saw one last night, uh, and I was very excited that my father and my mom are visiting, and I got to take him out because he's kind of the reason that I got into the, you know, the mountain lion tracking, and it was kind of neat to have him out there. And uh, uh, It's not Texas. It's, I'm in Utah, but uh, going out there and checking cameras, I didn't. There's a kill that I found, and um, I got to see one about 20 yards from me last night. And he looked at me and uh, really calmly just kind of got out of the way. They don't, you know, his, his, I'm near his kill. Uh, I was excited to get some footage. I'll share with that here uh, soon. So, where I, I have a friend that I've been uh, guiding up there, and she's been wanting. She's a, a, an amazing photographer. Um, Brooke Bartleson is her, her name. And she uh, has been wanting to capture, it's her dream to capture mountain lions out there in the wild. And yeah. uh, we, we set things up, and but she, she hasn't had the best of luck. Everything has been kind of nuts. Uh, I have trail cams, but she wants to take the high def, or, you know, the beautiful photography flash setup and everything. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, she's, she's new to that, but... Uh, Last night was really funny because uh, I went alone. To, well, my father would go check stuff. She usually goes with me. And uh, the cat, like I sent the video to you, Aaron, you know, when I checked her uh, pictures, they were all like pictures of, of just dirt or the ground. Oh, really? And when I checked the trail cam, you see the mountain lion come up to the, to the camera and knock the sensor over. And he's playing with it like a kitten. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's pretty cool. amazing. I love it. Yeah, never oh, get told, man. I'm I'm so glad that that uh, you know the, the kind of the circle of friends that we have going to Africa. It, you know what's funny to me, Aaron? It's it's kind of like an organic, um, an organic thing. Everything that you know that happens. I've never, I've never really wanted to. Well, everybody wants to be like the mutual Omaha guy and go out and you know do not just artwork, but 
uh, field work, helping biologists. Yeah. You know? uh, and it's it's nice how when you have a passion, that road sort of constructs itself, right? It uh, does. Organ organically, right? I find it really cool to to, to hang out with you, and uh, you've been a big inspiration, Peter. Uh, just you know the friends that we have, and then what what keeps us really connected is just our love of of nature and wildlife. Of you know, it, it all comes back to animals, and, and I'm really thankful about it. It's pretty darn cool. I love it. Yeah. Let me get some Maybe shading in here, guys. To up in Moab and see a different terrain. I think you're going to really enjoy that. Oop, I don't want to copy. Uh, Ellison Miller is asking, Hey Aaron, uh, do you have any tips for student crowdfunding? Uh, my school offers a trip to Tanzania uh, to see the wildlife next summer, and I really want to go, but it's quite expensive. Any tips would be helpful. Um, it's really just getting a good social media program going, right? Yeah. So it's just getting out there and putting together a good story of what you're trying to do and doing it. Why am I, every time I create a new layer now, I'm making a copy. I don't want to do that. Oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm hitting the wrong, the wrong button. Um, so it's just putting putting together a nice, a good social media uh, presentation and, and, and sticking to that. And people will dig it. So it's so cool to watch the wolves. It's always fun. Oh man, yeah, the wolves are great. The, the last ones good. that we saw, which were quite a ways away, um, it was really fun watching that because they're getting harassed by the coyotes. And there's that oh, one, yeah. <laughs> that one black wolf was he was being harassed by about five coyotes, five or six coyotes. Yeah. That was fun. Aaron, I see you're drawing wolves. Have you seen the cartoon Wolf Walkers? If so, what are your thoughts on it? I love Wolf Walkers. I thought Wolf Walkers got robbed. I think they should have won the the Oscar. I love um, I loved uh, Soul. Don't get me wrong, and I and I think Pete Doctor is a brilliant director, um, great guy. But I just I feel like um, uh, Wolf Walkers. For what they achieved, and, and from an artistic standpoint, I just thought it was a pretty amazing film. Also, you have a credit on Wolf Walkers. Probably we should point that out. You have a visual development. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yes, I only I only worked on Wolf Walkers for a couple of weeks, but they they were kind enough to give me a credit. But we, uh, Nick and I went over to um, Ireland and went to the studio, uh, Cartoon Saloon, which is the studio that made Wolf Walkers. And uh, we just happened to be there when they were making it. And I gave some lectures on animal anatomy and locomotion and that sort of thing. And it was a lot of fun. That sounds fun, man. Yeah, it was a blast. I heard that right where... Um... Where we saw Felicia, I don't mean to change subject, I don't know why I just thought of it, but we we're really lucky because they, they stopped letting people take pictures there where oh. we saw, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. And apparently we had just missed the, uh, the day before, I heard uh, <laughs> there was quite a squabble there. Oh, like, really? Two, two camera guys, like fisticuffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Which, I mean, I, I can see how that happens. You know, we've got to see that a little bit of that. Well, I guess you were, you were, you were photographing the, the bears, but people get kind of nuts around wildlife. Oh, I know. It's insane. I'm trying to move. How do I grab a whole bunch of layers? Holding mm -hmm. shift? No, that doesn't work. What if I go around? No, that doesn't work. That just moves it. I want to move over. 
I want to collapse, collapse the layers into one. Normal. Might help if I know the software before we start doing it in front of everybody. It goes, and I, I think it's, it's, I think it's good, so people can see that there's a struggle. You know? <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> you're, you're human. <laughs> you're the human, Aaron Blaze. The struggle is real. Uh, from Kirk Michael, Aaron, uh, when you were in Africa, did you see any honey badgers? And, uh, no. Uh, uh, have you come from one? Love to see you draw one. I love their attitude. Yeah, they are. They're very cool. Uh, no, I've never seen one in real life. I mean, in the wild, I should say. There we um, go. Give them a little glowing eye. From Allison Miller, uh, do you guys have any tips for encountering wildlife or like list of things not to do? Yeah, don't get too close. We had a lot of yahoos that kept getting too close, <laughs> and um, and it really stresses the animal out. And these people got really belligerent to the point where they wanted to fight you. Yeah. <laughs> That's they were fighting for the photo. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to fight them. Yeah. I think Lindsay, I think Lindsay, like, stopped me from heading over to that <laughs> Someone says you can press control to select multiple layers and then group those layers. Oh, control. That's what it is. It might be command on the back. Yeah. Yeah, control is uh is PC. Command is Mac. Well, there's a control key on a Mac too. Mm. <clears throat> Birds down. Have either of you met Joe Weatherly? Along with both of you, he's one of my favorite animal artists and has awesome books. Yeah. Yes. I know Joe. I know Joe. <laughs> Joe's awesome. <laughs> uh, Joe has uh, been on this expedition art journey with me uh, for a while now. He's a he's a great guy, and yes, he I agree. His his videos and his lessons are are really really good. And that's you know that's it, it's really neat to see the approach of uh, somebody like Aaron how he approaches big cats, and somebody like Joe how he approaches big cats. You know the. Uh, we're all looking for the same things, but it's nice to see the thought process of how we, you know, how we work. It, it's what blows my mind is people like Terrell Whitlatch that just know everything about the animal. How do I make a new layer? There we go. What did you do to make a new layer? Oh, yeah, right above the trash can. There's a little uh, paper icon. Oh, bam. Okay. Yep, there you go. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Yep. Uh, from Jay Price. Hi, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, A? Uh, good morning. Uh, which tool do you use to refill your uh, Bemoji pen? By Bemoji? Oh, I don't refill them. I just buy a whole bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Bemoji, yeah. Uh, she also, uh, in the same sense, is uh, I just purchased uh, Kuretake uh, Kurita Bemoji Candio E. Refill cartridge. Uh, uh, should so that it. I don't know that last bit there, but um, so you so you just buy a whole bunch when you don't bother refilling them. Yeah, I've got about fifty of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I got some drawer. I'm got, I got some drawers that if you open the drawer, uh, you're jacked of closing it because yeah, you have to press them to go back in. Aaron, how did you minimize everything? You selected everything? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I just, I, I had to, I collapsed everything down to one layer by hitting uh -huh. the control. And then I uh, went over to the little, that square tool on the left and shrunk it all down. There's a you little have to, You have to select it? Yeah. And it, it'll select the whole layer. Okay. I hope I don't. You can select the layers themselves, Manny. Like, click on the layers and group them. If you've got multiple layers. And I, don't, I don't know how to make it small. Nope, that's not it. You lassoed everything first, Aaron. Um, 
No. Uh, well, you can do you can do that. Go ahead and lasso it. Uh huh. Go ahead and Ted lasso it. And then Control T. Like. Yeah. But on the menu, uh -oh. on the menu, uh, on the icons over on the left, it's one, two, uh -huh. three, four, five down from the top. Is that square okay. with, the, with the, yeah, grab that and it'll allow you to resize everything. Okay. I must not be on that way. Okay. I got you. Uh, from Allison Miller, uh, I've seen a lot of people use a multiply layer to do shading, but a lot of other people just use a darker color. Uh, personally, I kind of use both methods. Is one way better than the other? No, it's whatever works for you. There's no, you know, there's no way, there's no method that's better than another method if it works for you. So... This is a question from YouTube. This may sound like a morbid or personal question, but I'm going through a bit of grief after losing my sister to cancer last September. Do you have any advice on how to carry on being creative while also grieving? Well, it's it's a it's a horribly um, no, I don't. I mean, it's a personal journey. You know, when I lost my wife Karen to cancer, um, I. I, the last thing I wanted to do was go in the studio and create, but eventually it was the one thing that got me through it. And you'll just don't force it. I guess that's the biggest piece of advice I can give you is don't, don't force yourself to go in there before you're ready. Just you'll feel it when you're ready. And, um, and I'm sorry for your loss. That's horrible. And, um, it's, uh, it's something that no one should have to, endure but we do and it's and it's you got to give your you got to give yourself and your mind and everything else just time to get through it and don't force it like i said i don't know aaron why <clears throat> i don't know why it's Came up. I don't know why we didn't stay in uh, Gardner. Oh, I know why we didn't. We went up and saw Troy. Yeah, we went up to go see Troy. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know why we didn't stay in, the, in Gardner to begin with. But... Whoops. Oh, I'm drawing on the same layer. Dug on it. And for, yeah. the, for the guys that just hopped in, what is the uh, software you guys are using? This is um, studio, uh, Magma Studio, is that what it's called, I think? Mm -hmm. Yes. Magma Studio. Uh, by, from Bobby Chu. Yeah. Good old Bobby. Bobby Chu. I love old Bobby Chu. Oh, Bobby Chu. <laughs> You guys draw so fast, it's crazy. No, you're crazy. You're crazy. No, it's just, um, you do it a lot. Well, it's like you said, it's it's um, years and years and years of doing this, man. <laughs> yeah. There's, that's, the, that's the advantages. There's no shortcuts, you know, there's no secrets. Just drop that eye in there a little bit more. Yeah, I, uh, as soon as I left, uh, like, man, I'm missing everybody and so much fun. And I'm like, I'm ready for another trip. <laughs> I know, right? It's fu it's funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, whether, uh, you know, we've always thought about going up to glaciers, which we need to do at some point. But, you know, one of the, even though we were in Africa, one of the most amazing moments I had is that time we stayed behind to draw. Yeah, we um, we definitely didn't do enough of those. And because you feel you're missing out on the uh, on the animals, but well, to a degree, you kind of are, right? So yeah, yeah, but oh man, that was that was so nice. It was so nice.
Uh, from Nick Busfield, are you guys enjoying the new save as copy command in the latest Photoshop update as much as the rest of us? I don't know what that is. What is that? Uh, uh, that they changed in the in Adobe. There's no save as a copy anymore. Like it's, oh, good. It's put it well. No, it, 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 sorry, you can't do a save as. You have to save as copy. So oh, they've taken away the old save as. Oh, I see. But it's actually an Apple issue, not a because it has to do with they change the operating system. It's driving a lot of people crazy. Also from Allison Miller, uh, any future tra uh, travels planned, or are those top secret? No, there's nothing top secret. What do we got planned? We definitely want to get back to England again and do our uh, our time in the castle. Yep. Well, that's probably yeah, going to be until next year. Yeah, in Manchester. Yeah. But uh, what other travel plans do we have planned for, for this year? Well, September's our big one, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. We're going to the Maasai Mara, baby. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. We're going to go see our friend Jorge. Uh, we, yes, we will. <laughs> I'm telling you, I want to get, I want to get Jorge to voice some animation for us oh my god yeah it's uh, yeah oh. so nice so much hey, fun Detlef is here says hey guys it seems like you had so much fun hey Detlef we had a blast the only way it could have been better is if you were there And from uh, Amber Whitman, uh, I was working on my Osprey painting while watching you guys, but now I have to go back to work. Uh, also, Manny, can you please catch Ro uh, Rossi the Harris Hawk, please? <laughs> can I do what? I, I can barely hear you. Can, can I go get Rosie? Rosie, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll have Rosie next time we do a live stream. She's uh, she's molting, uh, which means that all of her feathers are coming off. Which our season is done. We're done hunting. So now she gets to eat and be a little more content. I don't want to say fatter because you don't, you know, that's. I was just going to say Aaron's doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why Aaron was dropping feathers everywhere yeah. down the hallway? I yeah. currently can't fly. <laughs> but yeah, she's molting, so she's getting all of her new feathers. And, um, but I will have, uh, she's. Uh, she turns a little bit of attitude there when you when she's a little more fed up. But yes, I will get Rosie out. It'll be fun. Maybe we can do like a birds of prey thing, Aaron. Or you know. Oh, that'd be great. You know, just just to just to, to sketch, yeah. But I, I can have Rosie. I can do a question and answer with her. She's uh she's quite the quite the person, quite the hawk. Control. I need to put some of her hunts up. I didn't because sometimes uh, it's a bit rough to hear the rabbits when she catches them. And I don't know how people are going to feel about it, right? So, uh, but uh, I think, uh, I mean, it happens in nature all the time. And most of the people that that follow you, Aaron, are animal people that, you know, are passionate about it. So I think, yeah. I think they'll get it. If not blood and, blood and guts, but I mean, rabbits do kind of sort of make a loud noise when the hawk or eagle grabs them. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah, it's the only defense that they really have, and it's not. Oops. Uh, from Cora Dawson, Dustin, how's the photography course coming? I personally was given a new camera. I can't wait to break it in. Uh, it's in the works. Uh, we might be, we might start filming that course after we're done with the one we're currently working on, which is the uh, uh, co uh, costume, what was it? Uh, costume figure drawing. Come on, man, you've been working on it for weeks. Well, costume figure drawing. The trip kind of wiped my brain for me. <laughs> Let's see here, what am I gonna draw next? Hmm, 
It'd be nice, nice to go to Alaska. Aaron. Oh, I'm telling you what, man. If you haven't been, you don't know what you're missing. Well, yeah, I'm, we were I'm talking, working on something. Yeah, Nick uh, and I were talking about that, getting up there. I'm you're working right, on something and uh, rent an RV yeah. and we just go for a couple of weeks. Oh, man. Uh, to the late covers, uh, will Manny do some courses for your website? Yes, Manny's going to be doing a course on keeping a, a sketchbook. Yeah. And field journals. And field journals, exactly. It'll it's going to be, be great. It'll be fun because I'm going to take you guys on a little journey through a, a bunch of different areas. So it's a little different than filming uh, because i got to film out in the wherever I'm at, but it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to doing it. So. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, it's fun. And I'm, I'm also I'm working on this cat book right now for personal project. And I got a mountain lion, a mountain lion uh, um, project that I'm working on as well. And it's always nice, like part of the uh, part of the uh, the fun part is like. New sketchbook, new paper, you know, you know how that goes there. And it's oh, yeah. Feeling. <laughs> that paper that I got is, ah, oh, man, it's just so inviting. It's great. It's great. Uh, do you have any tips for not comparing your work to others so much? Yes, stop it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's super hard to do when you're young, man. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah. yeah. Don't gauge your, gauge yourself against yourself. Stop gauging yeah. yourself against other people. You don't know their experience. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. So yeah, stop gauging yourself against other people. That's just insecurity coming through. Stop. Just be patient. You're gonna, it's going to take time to learn. Is there a way to make an opacity on the layer that you did? Uh, after the fact? I don't know. Oh, yep. I just found it. Okay. There we go. I think I did an Aaron Blaze and drew on the same layer. Yeah. Hey. Oh, wait. All right. <laughs> it, it was, I, I was calling you. I did a Maddie, but <laughs> I'm a verb I'm now. Throwing, throwing, throwing that to the wind now. Uh, just a fun question. Uh, it's late in the day, and you want to draw. Uh, uh, and you want to draw. What is your choice of drink to relax? Um, my choice of drink. Yes. Probably relax. nowadays. I quit drinking. You know what? Did you know that? I quit. I quit alcohol. I'm really, yeah. I'm really proud. It's that was cool. Yeah, man. I quit alcohol. So my, so now my my choice is like uh, I love these um, Temple's Lacroix orange flavored sparkling waters. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question. I love these things. It might be a weird question, but do any of you know when animation became to be? Starting to become rougher, like Glenn Keane style. Looking at the roughs from 101 Dalmatians, for instance, it seems like they had cleaner roughs. Uh, not necessarily. It depends. It really depends on the artist. They just happen to be uh, tighter draftsmen. And you're not. You're seeing tied down roughs. Glenn, Glenn will show you his roughs. You know, from a from the very beginning rough stage. How did you lighten that again? Uh, the, uh, right under all the brush selections versus pro, 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 pro. Oh, I capacity. see it. Yep, yep, yep. Question for both of you. In art, do you think it's better to focus on quantity or quality? Oh, always quantity. <laughs> yeah. No, it's got to be quality. You know, no one cares about 100 crappy drawings. So do 50 good drawings. Oh, now, now, granted, you're going to do some bad drawings. Don't get discouraged by bad drawings, but always strive for, for, for good work. Well, quantity has its own benefit just because you're, you're getting more exercise, more practice. Yeah. Truth.
I shouldn't say more benefit. It has its own benefit. It does, yeah. Oh, Zonji commented saying, Aaron, I received my tiger butterfly print last week and it is beautiful. The delivery person said it in a puddle, but it was fine anyways. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad it worked out. Well, we we have extra layers of layers of packaging for those things, so uh, <laughs> sturdy. Were they talking about assigning the print, Dustin? The uh, it just says print. I don't know if it's a signed print. Curious. Why? Because I package and sign ones, and they're like quadruple packaged. They've got a tube inside a box, and there's plastic inside of that. Well, there you go. That's probably what saved it. Hey, Nick, did you uh, did you find out about the the cabins that are there in Lamar? Yes, we are working on it. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty darn cool, Manny. We'll go over it with you, but it's uh Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. From Amber Whitman, uh okay, how can I get myself into the art community more and get out there? I miss working with other artists doing collabs and working with art friends. Um for us it's just socialized social, you know, social networking. You know, <clears throat> A couple of years, I mean, last year, uh, before Corona, I had planned uh, to take, to invite a bunch of other artists, uh, new artists that usually don't come out with us. Uh, but, and I was even going to work on a project with all of us there, but the virus kind of put a stop to that. But hopefully we'll start opening up more uh, invitations. And it's not like it's a prestigious club, you know, it's just, we're just all friends that kind of get together every year and uh, say, you know, have the same passion. But a lot of people have reached out wanting to know how to how to come on one of these trips or whatever. And um, like I said, it just kind of sort of happened organically. Yeah. But uh, hopefully we can put something together. Zodi said that there was so many layers in the packaging that, and, and yes, it was signed. It's number 21. Oh, Zo oh Zoji? Zoji? Zoji. Hey, man. Zoji. Zoji. <laughs> oh, and also, uh, Becky Lockley got the Tiger Print, too. It says, thank you so much. You are welcome. We got more coming out. I'm currently working on this big watercolor. I haven't done any big big traditional pieces in literally years other than my so other than my uh my oil painting course and mm -hmm. um having a really good time with this giant I, I got a hair up my butt and decided to order this a whole bunch of uh uh really big watercolor paper i wanted to just i want to do some giant watercolors and so <laughs> So that's what I'm doing right now, and it's it's kind of cool. So we might be able to do some. We'll see if we can do some prints with that. I don't know how many people want to buy prints of, of pronghorns, but we'll see. Uh, from Zach, Zachary uh, Haverlock, uh, do you have any tips on controlling line work? It's very difficult for me to make uh, confident, confident and controlled lines. Uh, it usually takes me a few tries to get the line I want, and then I'm left with a bunch of scribbles. Uh, time. And stop. just stop redoing it. If you're talking about working digitally, get your fingers off the redo button. I've seen people that just, they get paralyzed, and they just, they do a line, redo, do a line, redo, do a line, redo. I'm like, <laughs> just draw the line. Just do it. How do you, how do you group, uh, how do you, Collapse a layer. Uh, hit control. Okay. 
Click on it, hit control and collapse, and it's, uh, I believe it's, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. merge down. Uh, merge down, yep. Oh, weird, but it just changes the opacity of the other layer. Uh, we, did you have a blend mode on? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's okay. It's yeah, all it's all right. It's all right. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Alison Miller, uh, Aaron, do you ever struggle with working through the rough or quote unquote ugly stages of a painting? I find myself constantly having a hard time getting through the early stages and constantly wanting to see the finished project with all the details. Yeah, you got to get patient. Just work in your patience there because it's, I know what you mean. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I do struggle through that, but it, it, I've been doing it long enough that I um, I uh, I just I know that it's going to get better. Aaron or Manny, any tips on getting uh, a drawing to feel more alive? Sometimes, even if I draw an action pose or gesture, it just feels stiff. It's finding uh, for me. It's about finding that gesture, finding the line of action, and and staying fluid with your drawing. Yeah, likewise. Keep it fluid. So, which also means drawing with fluidity. Try to draw with fluidity. You know, one of the things we're doing here, if you watch, just look how, look how quickly we're drawing. We're not chiseling, you know, we're just in here, just laying in, laying in stuff. Uh, this question is for the both of you guys. Uh, can you describe the benefits of sketch and paint animals from direct observation? Yeah, you're gonna understand, oh, I keep taking over the question. Go ahead, Manny. No, I mean, you're gonna understand the way animals work and the anatomy and uh, the way everything moves you're going to find out that you're going to be re relying more on gestures than on finished um, illustrations because i mean even drawing buffalo who sit and eat sort of in the same position will turn from uh, a side view to giving you their butt in no time <laughs> so only lines down quickly gestures and even like <clears throat> two or three lines and you'll know that it's a bison it's just it's a matter of uh of of retaining information in your head. And uh, I heard Aaron say something about, um, he looks at him, a look, you look at him a look away, right Aaron, is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, I well, do this blinking thing where I, I look at it and I blink and then I come down and, 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 and try to, re you know, it's like I take a picture, like a mental flash. Yeah. And, and, and bring it down. Hey, Caroline is here. Hey Caroline. And, and also, Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. And also Gabby's here says good morning all. Hey Gabby. Uh, Gabby, you Caroline. gotta get out of bed earlier. Huh? So Gabby, you gotta get out of bed earlier. <laughs> well she is three hours behind. Oh Nick. Nick. Uh, you got Paul Elliott Birch calling you. Oh, that's all right. But um but Dad, did you get that oil painting re varnished in the end? No. No, I just chalked it up to experience. And uh, from Amber uh, Whitman, uh, for both of you, uh, what is your go-to brand or watercolor paper? I am trying all kinds to find my favorite right now. Arches. Yep, arches. I'll never go uh, aquarel, aqu aquarel or whatever. Aquarel, yeah. Aquarel, there you go. And that's for a uh, paper choice? Yes. What a horrible coyote I just drew. I thought it was a mountain lion. <laughs> it's a great mountain lion. <laughs> Not a good coyote, but a great mountain lion. <laughs> Amy McCarthy says, I, I can't believe Beauty and the Beast is 30 years old. Did, uh, did you ever meet Howard Ashman? No, I never met Howard Ashman. 
Oh. Whoops. Uh, Manuel Ramirez uh, asks, how do I make a drawing that's made just with line work look less flat? I don't want to get into rendering just yet. I want to get my line drawing right. Man, that just comes with practice. Well, look at how Manny's drawing. You know, I, Manny, you got this almost like a contour drawing approach. I love the, yeah, just, you're not sketch, you're just following that form with that line. I love that. And, and one thing that I, one thing that I like to do is, um, what it, it, it's sort of one of those things where you don't take your line off the, the, the I'm sorry, the, the pencil off the paper kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, the more you do it, the better you become. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my mount line doesn't look like a mount line right now. Did either of you ever work with Ron Diaz? Ron Diaz? Like the, the yeah. disc jockey? I don't know. D-I-A-S? Nope. Ron Diaz, there's... Somebody you know. Here's a really broad question. What's the process of animating a Disney film like? I, I've heard that a few seconds of animated film takes typically takes a few hours. What's that like? <laughs> a few seconds actually <laughs> takes about a week. Yep. To do about five seconds of animation takes about a week. A few hours. Yeah, so I guess technically it takes a few hours. Gabby <laughs> <laughs> uh, says, uh, I wake up at 4 a.m. for work. It's not that I'm sleeping, it's that I'm working which is worse. Oh, I got gotcha. you. All right. Shut up, Aaron. <laughs> and Caroline says, thanks for getting that song my, stuck in my head again. <laughs> oh, come on. Of course. Da, da, da. It's like you've never heard it. Uh, from Martin, uh, Martin Berger, uh, how did Manny get into drawing and art? Can he talk a little about how he started? Was it me? Yeah, you, man. Come on, listen up. Yeah, no, it's because it sounds really far away. Um, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I've, I've always loved everything uh, art-wise. I used to get coloring books as a, you know, uh, young boy, and I never would color them. I would end up just copying things. So they were like my how to draw books. Um, animals, I give them a, a, a lot of credit. I just, you know, I think back in as a kid to, for me to be so mesmerized at watching a lion run and how he, he would change shapes and uh, it would, it, even at that age, I was wanting to draw. So, uh, you know, it all started with animals. It, it, I always think of Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom that show that. And then also I think of, uh, weirdly enough, like Popeye comes to my head because by the time I went to kindergarten, I could draw all the Popeye, uh, <laughs> 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 all the Popeye people, uh, and That's I'm still, funny. you know, it, it, I, I'm still pretty, pretty quick at. This is so funny. There you go. For someone outside the U.S. trying to break into the animation industry. Uh, well, you don't have to be in the U.S. to to get into the animation industry. That's for sure, um, because, um, I mean, if you look at Wolfwalkers, for instance, they're based in Ireland. You know, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in, in Mexico, South America. Um, I know I've been to several uh, animation studios in, in Chile. In Chile? Chile. So it's a matter of just, it depends on what you want to do, obviously, but um, there's a lot of great stuff out there that's not necessarily in the United States. And, you know, because of the way content is being distributed nowadays with Netflix and a lot of the streaming platforms, you can see a lot more opportunity present itself for people to create content in their home country. 
and not have to come to the United States, which I think is pretty darn cool. Yeah, I think so too, man. I think that's it's uh, breaks a little bit of the of the norm. Yeah. Aaron, I've been struggling with features of the face, and even though I've copied the values of reference, my portrait drawings always end up looking like a coal miner after cave night. <laughs> <laughs> Any tips? Uh, Sounds like you're going too dark. Right? Yeah, yeah. D d ease up on on your shading. Try do it, doing some some line drawing, and see what that does for you. You know, stay away from the shading for a little bit because that might be screwing you up a little. Have you ever been to Scotland, either of you? Oh, no, Scotland. Oh, I, I have you, Aaron. I've never been to Scotland. Oh, I love Scotland. God, Edinburgh and all, yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I felt like I was on a movie set. Yeah. I actually want to go back to Scotland just to draw. That's uh, uh, that I'd love to do. Yeah, there's just so many er, everywhere you look. Like everywhere we go here, there's Seven Eleven. Everywhere you go over there, there's like amazing, beautiful castles on the edge of the water. Just uh, yeah. We actually considered buying a castle at one point because they were cheaper than the average real estate prices in the U.S. at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and we thought that'd be a pretty cool corporate headquarters. <laughs> I think we saw there was one that was like 200,000 or something. Yeah, it was just crazy. And then it's like, if something goes wrong, where do you find someone that can work on a castle? <laughs> it's the upkeep, right? Exactly. Do you guys plan your lines and work it till it's right, or do you adapt your designs to the lines that appear on the paper? I work it till it's I work it till it's right. Yeah, it's almost like sculpture. Yeah. There's a lot of places that. Uh, Mon in Mon Monument Valley, Aaron, that I want to take you to, so we could go do some some yeah. drawing. We've got to get to Monument Valley. Uh, you're gonna love it. I may go there this weekend. I'm not sure. For those of you Sorry. that don't know, Monument Valley is the uh, it's the area in the Southwest United States where all the all the giant rock formations come up out of the ground. And you've seen them yeah. in Roadrunner. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think of. You know, it's really funny. So that's one of the first things I think of. I don't know, Aaron, how much you went to comic books, but there was a guy named Mobius um, that uh, did this Western comic. And he's out of he's a French. He was a French artist, and he did a comic book called Blueberry. Oh yeah. And, all, and uh, every time I see Monument Valley or uh, Arches or any of that area, and I think of those comic books. <laughs> uh, it's so funny, and it's a French guy. It's a guy from France. It's just the most amazing Western artist, you know. Uh, but then I think of Chuck Jones, you know. Right. Like, one of the days I'm going to get a bucket of black paint and draw a tunnel on one of those. I'm going to get in trouble with the National Park for drawing a, <laughs> one of those things that, <laughs> that the train will drive, drive out of when, All right. when I'm done with. Uh, Manuel Ramirez asks, uh, "Have you ever experienced a culture shock in any of our any of your travels? Uh, any funny stories you want to tell us?" Um, I've always been re really respectful of other cultures. I don't. I wouldn't say shock. Um, there's been areas that I've gone to that were um, a little more uh, harder to harder to navigate. I guess would be the right way yeah. to say it. I remember going to Kathmandu in Nepal and trying to um, just get through the airport and get out, and man, that was difficult. Manny, what's your favorite animated film? 
My favorite animated film. Wow. Oof. Wow, yeah. I don't think I remember. Yeah, that. I don't know if I. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, um, I have so many. Uh, you know, I liked them for for different reasons. Uh, I mean, animation wise, I was always I always loved the the feel of like Jungle Book and Robin Hood, just because it was really sketchy. Just that certain look, I, I couldn't tell what you no know, you know what was so different about it compared to like you know Bambi and Snow White um yeah yeah oh man I, I love so many of them I didn't like that brother bear very much <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just kidding no 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 um I, I loved Aladdin uh Little Mermaid um I'm a big you know if, if there's one thing that I'm like envious about and I'm half I'm glad it happened to Aaron and not you know, anybody else is, um, Glenn Keane is like one of my favorite artists and I, anything he touched, I thought was just so amazing. I always thought like watching Glenn animate, uh, his roughs, I was more interested in his roughs than I was his final pieces. Like I got to see some Tarzan stuff that he did. It's pretty uh, amazing, just, isn't it? And it's just, it's just mind blowing and, and, uh, best of all, he's such a nice man. Yeah. Uh, the class act, uh, you know, um, I, I chatted with him in one time that I met, we had a, a, a friend in common and then he was talking about working on the, uh, Marahute. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he was talking about that he met this amazing Eagle man. And I knew exactly who it was without him even mentioning a name. And my friend that was with me said, wait a moment. <laughs> uh, how do you know? And, and, and it, it was just this funny you know, coincidence thing that happened. He, he was talking about a guy named Morley Nelson. Morley Nelson. And, uh -huh. was, uh, and, and Glenn, you know, everybody asked Glenn questions about animation about drawing but i think when somebody asks you something that you're passionate about other than uh the artwork um whether it's guitar playing whether it's falconry whether it's archery whatever you kind of light up and when i told them uh hey did did when you were talking about that eagle man was it morley nelson he goes you how do you know morley you know <laughs> he, he dropped everything he was doing signing or whatever and talked to me and I said, oh, yeah, he's one of my heroes. And, and actually, I feel really bad. I, I got to send uh, Glenn his uh, copy of a, of the man's name. It was Morley Nelson. He wrote a, there's a biography of him now. He had a really interesting life, and, and uh, Glenn didn't know. But to getting back to animation, uh, just watching Glenn draw is just, is, is just, a, it's just so, such. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, amazing isn't it? Yeah, and, and I'm happy that you learned under him and, uh, because, my God, I can't think of anybody. Yeah, he was, you know, my hero. And there's a lot of great animators, but I always was drawn to, to, to his stuff. You know, he did these little, I don't know if you ever saw them, Aaron, these little uh, children's books yeah. about a raccoon. Rocky raccoon? Little... Yeah, no, not Rocky, but... Um... Um, little, yeah, he was doing that. He was doing them when I was in when I was an intern when he was teaching me. He was, yeah, these little Christian yeah. based little story books that you can buy at Christian bookstores, and they're just they're gorgeous. all little parables. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So good. Or is asking, Dustin, like how many photos did you take during your trip? Uh, <laughs> over 16,500 raws. And out of that, probably got a little over, a little over, say, like around 100 or so edited photos. And oh, so far. And 30 of those I'm, 30 of those I'm keeping. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Is it okay to draw slowly or even very slowly, or should I be trying to draw quickly? 
And also, is it better to draw zoomed out and treat the canvas like a piece of paper, or is it okay to draw zoomed in? I think when you're initially starting out a drawing, it's better to, to do it zoomed out. So you're seeing the forest for the trees, basically. You're seeing the whole thing. Um, but if you want to zoom in for details, then that's fine later on. And don't worry about your speed. Speed will yeah, come. Speed has nothing to do with it, yeah. No one cares it's about overrated. how fast you draw. Speed is overrated. Yep. Yeah. It comes in handy with uh, when you have deadlines for certain things, but uh, speed comes with time. And it does. Uh, from Rowan, uh, when drawing from life, since subjects like people and animals move a lot, sometimes I end up just mentally capturing their pose in my head, then drawing from that. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you're doing the right thing. Imagination too. No, because you're getting you're getting the pose in front of you, and then you're filling it in with what you already know. That's how you have to do it. There's there's no other way to do it, especially with animals moving. Whoever the whoever said that question, they're going to have a great time in Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah, or even a zoo. I mean, that's that's zoo drawings are, are so so much uh, so much of that. And from uh, Amber, uh, so I just need to say. Uh, Say how happy I am to think people actually like rough and uh, rough and sketchy drawings like I do. Uh, do you guys think that sketchy rough art is just as good as refined realistic art? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think it's better in a lot of cases. And from uh, Kevin Vaughn of Cleveland. Uh, Aaron, how is the feeling of the new house? Love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I gotta go visit you soon. Yeah, you do. Yeah. This time we should just draw. I don't have to get distracted. Yeah. So basically, basically what we'll do is just draw and not talk, Aaron. <laughs> That's our basic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, next time you're out here, I need to show you the, uh, the new wildlife trail that we found. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty darn there. amazing, that wildlife trail. Dustin and I are heading out there tomorrow morning. 7 a.m. Break and hail it. <laughs> Lake Apopka. Look up Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. That's where we're going to be tomorrow. It's an amazing place. Uh, from Gabby. All right, guys. The Gabster. Favorite animated movie for story or plot? For story or plot. Favorite animated movie for story or plot? Wow. Aaron, thought, what, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I thought oh. The Incredibles were great for story and plot. Oh, my God. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, those are incred those incredible. You know, I think both movies are really good. Oh, yeah. You know what? I mean, it's arguable whether or not you like the movie or not, but as far as having a really complex plot and pulling it off, there's two that come to mind as well uh, at Disney. One is Wreck-It Ralph, believe it or not, and the other one is Zootopia. They're very complex plots, but they pull it off really well. Yeah. Aaron, what's your, what's your favorite animated movie, Aaron? Bambi. Bambi? Yeah, Bambi and Pinocchio. Ah, I love Pinocchio, yeah. Uh, from Billie Jean 485, uh, to both Manny and Aaron, are you uh, are you using references for the current sketches? Yes. Yes. Um, the only one I didn't use reference for was this one here in the mountain lion. Right. Yeah, I didn't use reference for my bear. Popeye. Use reference for Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Popeye just left. That's why I spoke on him. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Come on, merge down. I want to merge hey, down. Hey, Aaron, long time. Uh, hey, man. Will you be attending any Comic Cons doing live demos? No. Not anytime soon. There we go. There we go. I think if we do do a Comic Con type of thing, it'll probably be one of those national park things where we can just invite people to come over. Yeah, I've never been to a Comic Con. Actually, no, I take that back. I did go to Comic Con. Yeah, I haven't been to a Comic Con. I've been to other conventions, but not Comic Con. Yeah, remember that time I kept getting an argument with you about I took you to Comic Con? Yeah, I know. It was, awesome. it was Chuck. I took, Chuck and I went. And I was like, no, I never took me a Comic Con. Yes, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> like, we, we almost got into a yelling match about it. <laughs> Can't believe you'd forget that I took you to Comic Con. <laughs> and then it was me that forgot. And once it was all over, I was like, see, I told you. <laughs> Why are many masters like Sergeant considered draftsmen? What? Wait. That's a weird question. Why are they considered draftsmen? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were painters? I guess that's the question. Because they, I mean, painting and drawing are extensions of the same thing. So, I mean, if you look at what Sargent did, what he could do in just a few brushstrokes as far as describing a hand or a face or whatever it might be, he was a master. He was just incredible. Do you have any recommendations for books on environments or animals? Um, or actually, does environments and animals? I don't know if they have any well, there's there's sketchbooks and things like that that I recommend. As far as uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, Bill Barry, have you ever seen that book, um, Manny? The book yes. by Bill Barry. Yep. Oh man, that book is so good. Where his yep. ske his sketches that he did while he was in Alaska back in the yep. 50s. Um, I really recommend that book. Unfortunately, I don't have it here with me because we're in the new place, but um. Yeah, I really recommend that. Manny, are you still involved with Expedition Art? I thought it was an amazing initiative, but I haven't seen any updates in a while. Yes, yes, we are. Uh, the coronavirus kind of got in the way of a lot of things, but yes, we'll get that going here soon again. It was hard um, to do any expeditions. Yeah, I, but yes, it, it's. I'm still involved. Um, we actually, guys, um, you mind if I plug our book, Aaron? Oh yeah, please. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, uh, if you guys go to expeditionart.org, we put a, a, an art book together of wildlife, and right now uh, it's at a really low price. We're trying to get rid, not get rid, but we have some leftover books that we need to uh, sell and still continue to donate money from those books. Uh, that book helped us buy a corridor in, um, Sumatra. Sumatra, right. Yeah, but uh, now um, we have some books there. If you guys didn't get it the first time, it's a really affordable price. Uh, Expeditionart.org. Go there and uh, purchase it. I put a it's link very affordable. It's kind of like Aaron's dollars, dollar uh, deals. Yeah. Uh, Nick, just put a, dollar. Nick put a link to the stream, on the stream. Oh, perfect. But yes, I'm still part of it, and we have some uh, some fun things we're going to be doing. And I did an errand again, and have my my uh, layers. You drew on, uh, yeah. You screwed up your layers, you dingbat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from also from Gabby, uh, what's your favorite movie for nostalgia? Something that pulls you back to a certain time. Where's the Fox the and the Hound. Hmm? What'd you say, Manny? The Fox and the Hound. Oh yeah. Man, oh man, oh man. I can't uh, I can't even listen to those those songs without crying. Oh I know. <laughs> oh my god. And it did uh, Glenn was on that movie, right? He did he do the bear scene? 
Yeah. The grid. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it was early, early days for him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's that's nostalgia to me. I mean, those. Uh. Well, you know who played uh, Todd was the um, what's his name from? Uh, he's oh my god, he's he's been in and out of rehab so many times. Um, Corey. Corey, Feldman? yeah, Corey, Corey, is it Corey? Art, is it Corey Feldman? Corey, Corey, one of those Corys has passed away, right? No, no, he's still around. They both are okay. No, yeah. Corey Hart's gone. No, I'm not. I know he is, but not not Corey Hart. Corey Hart's still around. Corey I, Hart. Yeah, Corey Hart. So I wear my sunglasses at <laughs> night. That's Corey Hart. <laughs> the other Corey, the the kid actor. Yeah, yeah. Corey, Corey, whatever. Brian Adams. Brian Adams. No, Brian Adams. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Interesting fun fact about the Fox and the Hound. It was the first film for John Lasseter, Brad Bird, and Tim Burton. Yes. Oh. Wow. Kind of movie all became big time directors in the future. That is no idea. Tim Burton apparently hated yeah. I mean, he hated the practice of it. Like, he loves animation, but he did it. There's, no, there's no thick and thin on this uh, on this thing, right? Yes, there is. The pressure sensitivity? There is. It's, uh, if you just, it just depends on which one you, you, you click on, like the ink in the upper yeah, left. I, I clicked on ink and, and it's yeah, you get thick. Up. You're getting thick and thin. Uh, from Kevin, uh, Aaron, when you draw animals, do uh, you still need to think, or are you drawing in autopilot? No, of course I got to think. Drawing's hard, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't do anything on autopilot. And from Manuel, uh, how do you get the most out of how to draw books? How do you get the most out of them? Yeah, Draw. I, know. <laughs> I was about to say that, but uh, <laughs> I, I always found out that on, on those how to draw books, um, they, usually they were overwhelming to me. So I would always sort of take a little uh, little tidbit and then just work on that thing. Uh, yeah. I don't know. If you're, I don't know if you're familiar with. Burn Hogarth. You know Burn Hogarth? Oh man, I used to. That's all I drew was Burn Hogarth dynamic okay, well, anatomy. I, I I went to a workshop with Burn Hogarth when I was a kid, and uh, or a teenager, and he confused the heck out of me. So yeah, he did. He did uh, um, solve some uh, a problem that I had visualizing something, and then once he, I was like, oh, that's how you do it, and it had to do with back muscles. But so what I did is like, okay, I, I got it now. I think I understand what he's talking about. Now I'm not going to pay attention for the rest of it because he's just going to confuse me. <laughs> so I left, I left with one, one little knowledge bean with, in my head. And I was happy that I, that, uh, with that. So I think, uh, not over analyzing them and, and, and because they can be really confusing. It's too much information at one time. The best way to do it is just draw. Yeah. Uh, from uh, Juni, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Manny, do you always start drawing with lines rather than draw shapes first, like circle shapes? I feel that like, easier uh, to approach sometimes than uh, draw shapes. Love your work. Um, you know, the reason I do it is because it makes, uh, I find it's a good exercise for my hand and eye coordination kind of thing. Uh, but. I do do I do draw basic you know like if I'm doing a painting uh, I'm not just going to be doing the line drawings I will go in and put my shapes in and and uh, figure those things out for spacing and make make sure things fall the right position but uh, my line drawing um, that just comes from in my head I already have some of those things laid out and it, it's just practice and practice. Um, I enjoy both. Uh, if it's just drawing, uh, I, I love it. Yeah, but uh, I, yes, I do do a lot of 
no, I guess no under, you know, I'm not, in my head, the, the, the little sphere that would go here and then here uh, it is there, but it's, it's, it's in my head. It's like a transparency level. If that makes any sense. Like I yeah. see it. Yeah. So uh, that's sort of my approach to, you know, a lot of things. And it seems to uh, cause some really pretty accidents that uh, um, make me problem solve. I think uh, uh, art is problem solving. Uh, there's no, you know, as long as your end result is there, it doesn't matter how you got there, I guess. But yep. I, I find that when I do do those, uh, I don't I, I forgot what you called them, Aaron, but when I'm just drawing with lines, um, it gives me a lot of really great accidents that uh, if I would have overthought, I wouldn't have got that. Contour drawing. Yeah, contour drawing. Uh, from Amber Whitman, can anyone be a part of Expedition Art? Yes. Uh, yes, you If you, you can. have uh, enough money. Yeah, if you have enough money. <laughs> Um, yes, we, we like, if you, if you guys look at our book that we put out, um, we put a, a call out to artists and, and, and friends to help raise money. And, uh, a lot of people in there, I don't personally know. It was a lot of people that either contacted us once we got going or, uh, or, uh, or had heard about it and, and they like, Hey, we want to help with this. There's a, an amazing illustrator out of New Zealand in there that noticed in the, in that, well, she actually asked about a, there's a New Zealand bird that's a, a, I forget the name of it, but it's a flightless bird and it's like a big giant parrot looking thing. And, yeah, it's uh, a, um, a cool, a cool, a cool, blah, 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 blah. cool, cool, I can't remember now. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. And, and she, she completely approached us and said, hey, I'd love to illustrate this if you don't, if you guys don't have it. So yes, anybody can. Uh, as soon as we get together, uh, what our plans are, we'll put a call to, you know, people asking for art or, or donating art or, or whatever it, it may be. So, and then the way it works usually is like people that are passionate about something. Like I'm pretty passionate about uh, big cats. Um, David Levy, one of our other founders, is and Christy are. Uh, ocean folks they, they really want to do some things for the ocean so it's just not uh you know it, using our passions to sort of fuel and help and uh, um, feel that our, our work is doing something to make a difference exactly manny or aaron is it worth it to get better in animation or to get better in animation is it worth it to take a shot from an animated movie and draw over it to figure out the closing or timing I mean, yeah, I mean, that's not going to hurt. It's, it's sort of like, you know, in art school, we had to pick old masters when we were in our painting class and and copy them. And, and you learn from that for sure. Um, you definitely learn from that. Oh, yeah. Uh, but um, but I wouldn't make a habit of it. I mean, yeah, try it here and there. But, you know, you're really going to learn when you have to solve your own problems. And I, uh, I didn't go to school for animation. I did work on a lot of animation. I worked on a lot of movies as well. But um, I was self-taught. And um, when I did step into the industry, uh, a lot of the things that I did on my own were correct. And a lot of things were really wrong. So, but, you know, I started animating on Post-it note little cards, uh, uh, the little Post-it pads. I make all this uh, yeah. Spider-Man through the buildings and I'd go it was like straight on animation no breakdown there so I would run <laughs> I'd run out of paper so I'd have to the good things about those notepads is you could uh you can always just add another little section to it right yeah. It's yeah what do you think is the most efficient or best way to study animal anatomy from life yeah the best no way to way. do is just do it from life no better way yeah and uh and if it's you just, can't get out, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. You got it. Well, I said, if, if you can't get out to like Yellowstone or any places like that, there's always zoos and uh, there's always uh, documentaries, uh, Planet Earth, uh, National Geographic. Uh, you can slow something down and pause it. Yep. Good, I find, I found like, I, I have, I've been doing that back even when there was videotape. 
the great thing about that is with videotapes, when you would pause it, it, it was never a, a still image. It sort of vibrated a little bit. It was kind of grainy. Yeah. But that would you would that would really challenge you to uh, to get features out and, and to make you think and not rely so much on your on your reference, you know. So, but I mean, you can slow slow stuff down and and uh, draw from it. You know, zoos are great. True. The zoo go in the morning or in the evening because midday the animals are all asleep. So. To get started in digital art, is it better to use a tablet like an Intuos or a screen? Or drawing on a screen? I, it, I think it really depends on what you're comfortable with. I mean, I, I don't like drawing small, so I like having my big my big 32-inch Cintiq. But, you know, it's just like you said, I know a lot of people that are fine drawing small. I never liked the disconnect between, they mean like a display tablet versus a... a oh, tablet. yeah, I don't like to disconnect. Yeah, I've never liked the disconnect between looking, drawing down on the ground and looking up at a monitor. I like, I like it's the, the line to appear where the instrument is. I guess. Yeah. Manny, what about you? Do you draw on a, like an Intuos or anything at all? Um... <clears throat> I started with the, the little the little pads at first, and then uh, uh, I ended up on the Cintiq, and I, I like drawing big. Um, if it's ink, if it's an ink drawing, if it's non-digital, I, I can do any size. Sometimes it's really nice to do little tiny drawings, kind of like the the wolf silhouette that Aaron did uh, out in the Lamar or yeah, in Lamar Valley, in Slough Creek, the little silhouette of the wolf. Oh yeah, in the back. Yeah, those 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 are fun to do, but um, I I like drawing big. I am all out of questions. Well, I think we're going to probably wrap it up here pretty quick. Yeah, I'm good. Finish up this little guy, and then I'm ready yeah, for some lunch. I haven't eaten yet. Yeah, me, me neither. <laughs> me neither. Where's our... Uh, is there an ink dropper? And here's something fun. This is the, that first silhouette. This is what I was working on. Working with. Oh, Those yeah? Yellow. Yeah. I like these little sculptures because they're uh, nice to look at and uh, draw from. This is one of the references. Did you do any sculpture, Aaron? No. I haven't sculpted since college. I'd like to do it. Did, did I show you the bronze that I did of uh, Silver Eye, which is one of the National Geographic Lions? Yes. The, the bronze, the little bronze that, that I did. That was used. super cool. Do you have like that, to... Manny, or is that just... Yeah, let me go get it. I have it back here. Yeah, you should get it. Uh, Rajuni, uh, where can I uh, follow Manny's work? My Instagram is where I post the most. Uh, I don't know if Nick, Nick can put a link to my Instagram. I think it's Manu Manu Art, right? Manu yep. Carrasco underscore Art. Right, on it. And uh, uh, I do have a uh, a YouTube channel where I have some things that. Or I do my, my walkabouts. I gotta do more. On your walkabout. On your walkabout. Here's a. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is Silver Eye. This is the casting already of it. Can it you was, see it? it Dustin, can you pull him up? Was, Make him full size. Are you able to? Are you able to do that or no? Well, I can. That's the best I can do right here. Okay. There you go. This is a. This is a. A lioness that I did for Beverly and Derek Jobert, who are oh yeah, National, National Geographic filmmakers. Do you know if they filmed? Uh, maybe I asked you already. Um, the documentary Eternal Enemies, where it was between the lions that's and the them. hyenas. Yeah, that's them. And and Silver Eye was one of them. She was that. She had that Silver Eye. So you you can tell one of her eyes, and this one is. Well, we actually, we use that documentary as uh, 
inspiration for the Lion King. For Lion King? Yeah. Yeah. And here's a sketch that I did of a snow leopard. You guys can see that. Oh, that's super nice. That is such yeah. a snow leopard head. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna, and they're probably, I mean, they're similar for scale, so I may, I may cast this one. Yeah. So. Uh, from and I'll say, I'll say this. Uh, are you allowed to pick up skeletal remains, uh, specifically skulls, out of uh, out of Yellowstone and bring them home? No. No. No, you can't. not at all. No, man, that's illegal. <laughs> you remember all of the uh, Cape Buffalo heads, Aaron? And uh... oh my gosh, I remember <laughs> when I when I was in um, when I was in Tanzania, there was a perfect perfect giant giraffe skull right there and the, and the, i remember our driver he's looking at me he goes you want that don't you <laughs> you want that don't you i said yeah he goes you can't have it <laughs> it belongs to the land but look at that right next to nick i've got a giraffe skull That's nice, Aaron. Love it. Well, I love your. I, I like all yours. I love yours. No, I love yours. I love you, Aaron. You man. I love you, ma'am. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Boulder, Wild. Boulder, Wild. Well, that was fun. Thank you guys for joining us. We had a really good time. That was fun. We loved it. It was fun. And, uh, I think my line work lightened up or something on there, but that's okay. Oh, because I uh, I merged it. That's why. But can um, you give, a, you give me a heads up next time if we if we want to bring Rosie on. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> You could squawk at everybody. Absolutely. So, uh, so thank you guys for joining us for our Yellowstone live stream reminiscence session. <laughs> it was great. And uh, remember, we've got uh, our sale going on over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. This is the last weekend that you can get my animation course for $1. Uh, it's going to go back up to its normal price after that. And then this next week, um, this will be the last week in general that you can get all of our other courses that are drastically reduced down to a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever they might be. So um, if you're looking for some really cheap quality art courses, go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and you'll be able to get everything there. Cheap comma quality, not cheap quality. It's not, yeah, cheap comma quality. <laughs> cheap. Super cheap. <laughs> not cheap quality. Oh, super cheap quality. Yeah. <laughs> High, high quality. quality. We prefer high quality, affordable. Affordable. There you go. <laughs> Terrible ending job. <laughs> but a fresh intern that doesn't know how to edit. But anyway, well, sorry about the guys. It was great. I had a great time. It's hot in here. It's a little warm. It's a little warm. It always gets hot in here. But uh, uh, thanks for joining us, Mandy. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. Love you guys. Love you too. And we um, we will be getting back out to draw pretty soon i actually I'm, I'm looking forward to you and uh peter coming out here to florida and yep. uh us taking you guys out and showing you some of the uh the haunts around here actually one of the really cool places that dustin and i just discovered that we're going to tomorrow is really cool it's this 11 mile drive through the marshes of lake apopka it's the uh, lake apopka wildlife drive so uh, we're going to be out there tomorrow yeah there's so much wildlife out there. I mean, we even well, bird saw, life, yeah, bird life is is our is the main thing out there, and it's yeah, just we incredible. Yeah, we even saw a uh, purple gallinule, which we which I've never seen before. You yeah, seen pretty this. tropical. Can you save this drawing so you can post it? Yes. Uh, There's a way to export, right? Yes. Yeah, lots of birds. I can do this too. Save. Yeah. <laughs> Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, man. Well, that was awesome. Yeah, thank you. That was great. And uh, we will keep in touch. Once again, uh, plug your, uh, Manny, plug your social media real quick. I think it's, oh, man, I, I, I'm pretty sure. It's fail. Fail. Yeah. You yeah, fail. You it. <laughs> his YouTube is Manual Art Channel, and his uh, Instagram is Manu Carrasco underscore art. Yes. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Nick's on it, man. See, you do have it, Nick. I'm just... I do have you. You're just walking away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get, I get you more clothes to. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm painting yeah. clothing. Before you know, before you know, it, Nick's like, uh, Aaron, I'm moving to Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> what? And, and he's just wearing uh, all cool clothing. He's fun. Yeah. He's fun. All right, you guys. We're getting. Uh, I'm, I'm out of here like a wet noodle. Yeah. Let's right. go eat. <laughs> you, you slurp a wet noodle really fast. That, I'm out of here. My, my college roommate used to say that all the time. I'm out of here like a wet noodle. Nice. Or as they say in, in uh, Back to the Future, I'm going to make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Have a great week. Uh, uh, Nick's pointing at something. This movie. Oh, Have a great week, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Go out, put some beauty back into the world. We're artists. That's what we're supposed to do. Be nice to somebody. Make their day a little bit brighter, and you'll brighten up your own. So go on out there, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Come with me, Bob.